بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد وصلی اللہ رسول الکریم اللہ بعد today we're going to look at one aspect or the overview aspect of Dabbatul Ard. What do I mean by the overview aspect? Because in a methodology, a proper methodology, what you have to do is you have to take the Athar, the Qur'an, the Riwayat, the words of the Qur'an, put them together in some macro perspective. And then look at the current situation and put that together and look at how they connect. Okay. I don't want to talk about this in detail. Maybe I'll talk separately uh, next time or sometime within the next few weeks if I remember. But some of the signs of the Day of Judgment can have tabaqan la tarqabunna tabaqan an tabaq. That... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you from one stage to another stage of the same sign. Okay. So, for example, tall buildings can be different types of tall buildings and taller and taller buildings, right? Uh, and then different aspects of this, which I'm not going to go into right now. Um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يعني حَتَّى يعني This is one level after another level until a certain time so Allah gives you his ayat and they increase and increase and they uncover themselves and they show display different aspects of until it becomes absolutely clear today we're going to go over 19 tafasir regarding Dabatul Ard with particular reference to a very crucial piece of information that Sheikh Imran Hussein has shared with us. And I would like to put the different opinions together, including the one that Sheikh Imran Hussein has pointed out, and how when you put it all together, it leads to an understanding of, and how it relates to the current situation that we're in today. Okay? So, Let's begin, inshallah, bi barakatillahi azza wa jal. So, let me start here, if Allah wills. This is Imam Tabari. And Imam Tabari, he says, أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ تَابَةً مِّنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ قَالَ هِنَا لَا يَعْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا يَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ this will be a time, right, where there will be no enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. So this is the first thing in putting all the riwayat together, okay. One of the ones that is most repeated is this point, okay. And I went through maybe almost uh, close to maybe 40 tafsirs, out of which I chose 19. And this is one of the things that you will see throughout uh the uh, the narrations, okay? Hina uh, at that time la yamuruna bil maruf wa la yanhuna anil munkar, and they will not forbid evil. So this will happen at that time, okay? So this is one salient feature of that situation. Let's go to now Imam Qurtubi, okay? Imam Qurtubi is the one who emphasizes one of the points that Sheikh Imran Hussein. May Allah bless him also mentions. <coughs> and uh, so what is that? Let me now show you. Uh, I'm going to read from now here from where it says. Tukallimuhum taklimuhum bi fatha atta min al-kallim huwa jarh. So, one is, of course, kalam, and we also know in the Urdu language, as well as the Arabic language, kalam means to talk. And over here, I want to make something uh, uh, clear about the word kalam, okay? There are different words used in Qur'an for the word to engage in a conversation. For example, there's the word hadith, okay? Hadith properly means a discourse, okay? And can also mean something new. Something new is said. 
Okay. Uh, the other word is uh, يحاوره, is a conversation that is taking place where you return back. Like somebody says something and then you return back what they said to them. And then they return back to you and you return back to them. And it's a conversation that's flowing on, let's say, the same subjects or same subjects where you're enjoying a conversation. Okay, you have you have the word kalima or kalam. Okay, kalam is a, a a phrases, words, commands that are meaningful generally, and that command people to do certain things. So, if there's a kalam, generally it is it is pushing you towards a certain way of behavior or a certain idea. So, uh, this is kalam. So there is hadith. Uh, there's qala, you know, qala he said. Qala is when you are uh, either quoting someone uh, that they said such and such. And uh, the word qala is, you know, uh, has its own, is, is a long discussion, which I'm not going to go into. But uh, now what is uh, interesting about this verse, okay, uh, if you go up over here, if I go to the top of the, Tafsir. Uh, and when the qawl occurs. So qawl also means to say something. Okay? And kalam and to kalimuhum also can mean to say something. But obviously they don't mean the same thing. Okay? So the general meaning that everyone has taken is you kalimuhum, it'll talk to them. But the other meaning of this word, this dabba, this animal, will talk to them. And so we've already talked about one of the things mentioned in, across all the tafsir is that it'll be a time where what? Good is not promoted, evil is not forbidden. Okay? And then in this, uh, Imam Tabari uh, rightly quotes, bil fathitta, okay, min al kalim, huwa jarhu. It means to wound. Okay, so now you have three things coming together. Conversation, kalam, okay. And uh, generally, uh, over here I'll mention, okay, that kalam is one unidirectional, okay. Tuhawiru is two directional, okay. So when there's a kalam for me, there's a word for me, there's a kalam of Allah, it's Allah is talking to us, okay. And the other, so, so one is kalam, like talking, okay? The other is a time where there's not enjoining good and forbidding evil. And then the other meaning is jar, which means wound, okay? Bi fathata min al kalim huwa jarhun qala akrama ay, and akrama said, who is the great mufassir, to sammuhum, it will mark them. Now keep this number four. It will mark them. It'll be a time where there's no enjoining good, nor forbidding evil. It will talk. Okay, that's yani majhur. Then it will hurt them, wound them. It will mark them. Okay. And then, سَأَلْتُ an ibn Abbas an هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَوْ كَلَّمَهُمْ أَوْ تَكَلَّمَهُمْ so, tukallimuhum or takallahum. Tukallimu, he will talk to them. He will hurt them. And then Ibn Abbas in one of the narrations said, Kullu dhalik. Both of these meanings are there. Okay. Now, let's go to the next tafsir. Okay. Uh, so, over here it says, Dabbata min al-ard tukallimuhum tuhadithuhum. Okay. Uh, it will talk to them. Okay. So, if we take this meaning, then we can still put it all together, as you'll see, and it comes out to one uh, interesting timing and understanding, which then there is also hadith that also relates to this, you'll see. So this is uh, Fatul Qadir, okay, Fatul Qadir. Uh, he says this, uh, and then uh, in Fatul Qadir, it also narrates, Altu ibn Abbas an qawlihi, تُكَلِّمُهُمْ يَعْنِي هَلْ هُوَ تَكْلِيمْ بِاللِّسَانِ أَوْ مِنَ الْكَلَمْ هُوَ حَرْجِ 
So Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Now who's Ibn Abbas? He is the Khibrul Ummah. He is the man of Quran. He is the greatest Mufassir amongst the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. هَلْ هُوَ مِنْ تَكْلِيمْ بِاللِّسَانِ Is this talking about talking with the tongue? أَوْ كَلِّمْ هُوَ حَرْج Or does this mean wound? He said, كُلُّ ذَلِكْ Both of these meanings are true to Ibn Abbas. Uh, and over here, I want to mention that some of the Mufassirin that held this opinion, that both of them are true, talk about how Dabba will go and mark the people with the staff of Musa, which I will not talk about right now because it has to do with magic, okay? has to do with magic, just keep this in mind. So there's an element of magic here where you hurt people with your kalam, you hurt people with your words, okay? There's an element of magic here. And so uh, Ibn Abbas said, yes, both meanings hold firm according to him, okay? So it'll be kalam that is Converse, confer, conversing as well as kalam that is wounding the person okay it will be a time where they're not even though they're it's talking it's not enjoining good and forbidding evil okay it will mark them okay let's continue now these are things that you'll find in many of the tafasir over and over i'm just referencing uh some of them that are specific to uh, but both, all of these points are mentioned over and over again, as you'll see some of these that I'm going to emphasize on. Uh, uh, okay, now, uh, so I was saying about the Dabbatul Ard, you know, it's going to hit people with the staff. So they take it from that perspective, from the narrations that mention that, that it'll mark them, right? It'll put it make their faces white or black by marking them. And also hit them, and you'll also be talking to them. So you find this metaphor, you can say, in the narrations of the hadith. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, okay, I'm going to skip this tafsir for now, and let's go to this uh, tafsir. Okay. Now this tafsir. Uh, of Ibn Kathir, of course, is referring to what? Is referring to the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the jal, wa duhan, wa dabbatul ard, wa tulu al-shams, min al-maghribiha, right? And, uh, and then the, the, and then there are other narrations. So there's many of these narrations that mention dabbatul ard. Now, uh, one thing that we have to kind of uh, figure out in all of this, uh, and that some of the Mufassirin, Imam Razi, others have talked about, as you'll see, is that the Dabbatul Ard mentioned in the Hadith, Batul Ard mentioned in uh, the Quran. Okay, so Dabbatul Ard, uh, the animal of the earth or land mentioned in the uh, Hadith literature versus the one that is mentioned in Quran, are they necessarily the same. Imam Razi asked this question and so do some other people, so I'm just putting it out there. After quoting all of these hadiths, some say yes, some say no, and it's possible that this Dabbatul Ard will have many different manifestations, but one of them uh, becomes clear as I go through uh, this, okay? Um, in this tafsir, Tashkil, Tukallimuhum Tila, Tukallimuhum بِبَطْلَانِ الْأَدْيَانِ كُلُّهَا إِلَّا دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ Okay, so he will uh, talk to them about the falsehood of every religion except Islam. So this is also one thing that is mentioned in many, many tafsirs. Okay, uh, and then uh, over here, But the interesting point mentioned in this hadith, in this uh, tafsir, as well as uh, three others that I found, is that they refer this to jasasa. Okay, and so this is the point that because when you looking at uh, as a methodology, okay, as a method, when you're looking at narrations, you want to see okay which narrations are fitting together, and which narrations are not fitting together. The narrations that are not fitting together, you do away with. 
And the narrations that seem to be fitting together, you put them together and see what picture you get and see what your current situation is. Now, uh, in this tafsir, one of the things that's been mentioned, well, he a jassasa. Okay, jassasa, just keep this in mind. You know the, uh, the hadith about, uh, that mentions jassasa, right? Jassasa means spying. This was an animal that's been described in various traditions of the Prophet, but he has no front, no back. He's like hair all over the place. Now, this will also, as you will see, fit into many of the narrations when you put them all together. Okay? Let's go to the, uh, this is in the tafsir called tashkil. And then, uh, you have here, Again, uh, you have the uh, Alusi, Tafsir Alusi, Qila huwa min kalim, bima'nal jarh. Uh, the meaning of kal, kalim with a second lam is jarh, wound. Taf'il li takthir. Okay, it is the action of many. Okay, so it is, uh, j, j, uh, it is like, uh, it is, it, it shows that there will be a lot of kalam. A lot of wounding and a lot of talking. Okay, you ayidu kiraatu ibn Abbas wal mujahid and etc. etc. And then what is that? And taklimuhum, taklimahum that it will wound them. This dabbatul ard will wound them. Bifathata. Okay, wasakun al kaf. Okay, and there will be a second kaf. Okay, takhfif al lam. And some of them in their qira'ah, their recitation of the Qur'an, some of the qira'ahs, they actually say, تَجْرُهُهُمْ And their animal of the earth that will wound them. Literally, they use the word jar, jaraha, which means to wound instead of kallam, which means to talk. The, the recitation actually has jaraha in it. Okay? مَكَانْ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ Okay, and then he continues talking about this, that he will mark them, he will hurt them, he will talk to them, okay, at a time when there is no enjoining good and forbidding evil, okay, and don't forget what, jassasa, okay, so now keep this in mind, now let's go on to the next tafsir. Now, one of the things I'm trying to show you is that when you hear Sheikh Imran Hussain say something uh, that you have not heard before, uh, it might be good idea to actually go back and hit the books. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is Zadul Maisir. Okay. Qawlu Taala tukallimuhum kiraal aktharun bi tashdid alam fahuwa min al kalam. فيما تكلمهم بثلاثة أقوال. Okay, so there he goes over the different statements of what it means to talk and how he'll be talking, whether they're talking in Arabic or is this talking in non-Arabic, because it uses the word nas. Is this referring to only Arabs? Is this referring to more than Arabs? All of these things have been discussed in the different uh, tafsir. Okay, uh, and it will talk to mu'minin as well as kafirin. Okay, so just keep this in mind. This is kind of like reiterating what we already know. Okay. وَأَمَّا قَوْلُهُ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ وَقُرِئَ تَكْلُمُهُمْ مِنَ الْكَلِمْ وَهُوَ جَرْحُ Okay, and as far as تُكَلِّمُهُمْ talking to them and and then تَكْلُمُهُمْ meaning wounding them رُوِيَ أَنْ دَابَةُ تَخْرُجُ مِنْ صَفَ مَعْنَهَا أَصَامُ مَعَهَا أَصَامُ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ وَخَاتِمُ سُلِيمَانُ Okay, so what does it mean that it has the staff of Musa and the ring of Sulaiman This seems to be pointing to something to do with making and breaking magic. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, because the question is, the question is that uh, when do we use, allow metaphors? When do we allow metaphors in a tafsir? Okay, when do we allow metaphors in a tafsir. I'm going to give you the rule and then talk about the rule in detail in another video that I will be doing inshallah ta'ala. Okay? And the rule is that everything is to be taken literal unless there is a reason to be not taken literal according to Imam Abu Hanifa. If it doesn't fit in the literal meaning, 
then now you have to look at it metaphorically. Let me give you one example and I'll end at that. They're deaf, they're dumb, they're blind. Do we take that literally? Or do we take that in terms of a similitude or a metaphor or an example? It's, it's a metaphor for a state of a people internally. Why? Because the, 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 the text will not make sense if taken literally. Right? It will only make sense if you take it metaphorically. So Imam Abu Hanifa says that when something doesn't fit literally, then it will be taken metaphorically. However, Qadi Abu Yusuf, alayhi, he takes the opinion that if something is metaphor, metaphor, you have to prove that it's a metaphor. Okay? Otherwise, it will be taken literally. So if there's a dalil that it's metaphor, can you prove through logic? Because metaphor can only be proven through logic. Um, then it is a metaphor. Okay, so let's continue, inshallah, over here. Okay. Quri'a taklamahum min kallim wa huwa jarhun ruwiya an dabatu takhruju min safa It'll come out from the, the safa and marwa ma'aha asa Musa alayhi salatu wasalam mukhati Suleiman fadurubu al-mu'mineen bayna aynayhi bi asa Musa and he will hit the mu'mineen with the asa of Musa فَتَنْكُثُ تَنْكُثُ نُكْتَةً بَيْضَى And then it will grow up a white thing. وَتَفْشُوا تِلْكَ الْنُكْتَةً فِي وَجْهِ الْحَتَّى يُضِيءُ لَهَا وَجْهَا And then his face becomes bright. وَتَنْكُثُ الْكُفَّارِ هِيَا أُنْفِخُ فَتَفْشُوا نُكْتَةً حَتَّى يَسْوَدَّ لَهَا وَجْهَا And then the, the kuffar, or the rejecters of the truth, uh, even if they're uh, believers, they will, what? They'll have a blackened face. Okay? Uh, and also, again, he talks about ma'naha takthir. Okay? Takthir of what? Jar. When you say, uh, so takthir of jar. Takthir means a lot of wounding will happen as a result of this phenomenon that we will be discussing in some detail. Okay, again, tukallimuhum, uh, and uh, this is uh, the tafsir of uh, Lija, Liji. Uh, I'll look at the tafsir in a second. Let me just uh, read this to you. Tukallimuhum min kalam aw min kalim, ay jarh. It is, you know, in the hadith literature, when we're looking at a hadith from the perspective of what mistakes are in it, it's called jar, meaning we're looking for the wound, jar wa ta'dir. Okay, so, so, jar qad warada an asa musa takunu yadiha, and then ex ex the same narration is uh, mentioned, okay, that it is a wound. Uh, let's go on to the next tafsir. Ruya and Takhruj Maha. This is the same narration about him having it is going to be what? It is going to create a white face or a dark face through this and it will be causing a wound also. Uh, and it will also be talking. <coughs> it will be a time where there is no enjoining good, forbidding evil, and it somehow, according to some of the Mufasirin, relates to Jassasa. Okay. Uh, Hiya ajassasa. Okay. Uh, this is Nasafi. Imam Nasafi in his tafsir. His tafsir is very interesting, actually, Imam Nasafi. But he plain out just says it's jassasa. Tawnuha sittuna zira'an la yudri. You know, it's, it's a very gigantic thing. Okay. Basically, is the idea. Uh, then, uh, you have Ibn Atiyah. Okay. Uh, and Ibn Atiyah, uh, he says, "Tukallimuhu min kalam wa fi mushaf abiya to bay to bay to be him, meaning it will warn them. Fasarraha akrama to samuhum it will mark them, and this is also another. So, what is it that talks, wounds, marks at a time where there is no enjoying good, forbidding evil, and has to do with jassasa, has to do with magic? Okay, that will make people shine because of it and make people dark because of it? This is the question now. Okay. 
تحدثهم وقراءة uh, of others تكلمهم تكلمهم بكسر اللام and that will be uh, جر okay and وقراءة ابن عباس وابن uh, المجاهد and others ابن عباس كلهم ذلك meaning both meaning of كلام as well as wound it's both of them together okay now let us now continue with the next uh, narration tukallimuhum uh, ay tusammahum meaning it will mark them okay it will get, mark them so what is this thing that i'm asking you that will mark the people will wound the people will talk to the people we experience it every day if you think about it okay and like i said the alama to sa'a can have different stages, but we're definitely living in a stage where there is something that talks to us and at the same time wounds us, at the same time increases people's imans as well as leads them into darkness. At the same time, we are living in a time where there's no enjoining good, forbidding evil. We're at a time where jasus, spying and information and surveillance, jasasa is at its peak through this system that hurts us and talks to us okay so uh now over here uh let's see if i want to uh and uh mahasin al-ta'wil also mentions the ayah hatta idha futihat ya'juj wa ma'juj wa minhum wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun uh as a part of this phenomenon so if the yajuj and ma'juj have come out then many of the tafasir not all of them but many of the tafasir link this with the yajuj and ma'juj and i'll just leave it at that for now okay tukallimuhum min kalam wa qira' ibn abbas ghayruhum tukallimuhum bi fathata takhfif al-lam min kalam huwa jarh wa su'ila ibn abbas an hadhihi al-ayah and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh was asked about this ayah to kalimuhum au ta kalamahum. Okay, uh, will does it mean to talk or to wound? Kullu dalik. Okay, kullu dalik. All of this it has the meaning of all of these things, and uh, you can see that in the parable given about how uh, they um, the dabbatul ard marks the people. Okay. Uh, uh, again, إِذَا لَمْ يَعْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ A time where they will not enjoin the good and forbid the evil is when this will occur. And some of the tafsir, like just uh, one or two, mention this with along with the coming of, out of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And uh, in this tafsir of Kashaf, of course, uh, uh, okay, Jassasa. He says it's related to Jassasa. Okay. Now, uh, now this uh, last tafsir, Arazi, Imam Arazi. You know, أَمَّا قَوْلُهُ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ قُرِئَ تَكْلَمَهُمْ مِنْ كَلِمْ هُوَ الْجَرْحِ and as far as the recitation, it is re it is recited in two different ways. And if it is recited as taklamahum min kalim huwa jarhu, ruwiya dabatu takhruju min saf. And then it continues saying the same thing. Uh, and uh, also mentions the issue of takthir, uh, that it has many. Uh, and then he even mentions, aidan uh, ala ma'na takthir, yuqal fulan. Mukallimun ay mujarrahun. If you say someone is mukallamun, uh, it ay mujarrahun, meaning he is very much wounding of someone else. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is the nineteen uh, tafsir books that I wanted to go over in regards to dabbatun. Now let's put it all together. Uh, let's see if I remember everything. It will mark the people. It will wound the people. It will talk to the people. It will be at a time there's no enjoining good and forbidding evil. It is somehow related to the idea of jasasa, 
Okay, it is somehow related to the idea of what uh, the coming of, out of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. It is somehow related to the idea of magic, whether it is and Shayateen, referring to Musa and Suleiman, and that something of theirs they have either in this world or the next world that has that effect, that vibe, you can say. So, what is this Dabbatul Ard? When you put all the narrations together and then look at our situation together to, uh, today, there's only one thing that's talking to us, directing our minds uh, in one direction, okay? And uh, even though kalam can mean two two ways, but it's it's you know it's generally you can say one way. So there's this one way direction, and it could be, and it could have many different levels. So what is it that talks to us and hurts us? So now, I'm going to give the answer here now. It seems, when you put all the narrations together, what is that magical, has magical effect? It hurts the people and talks to the people. Okay? And all of these qualities of jasasa and the coming out of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, what is it other than the media that is controlled by Ya'juj and Ma'juj that talks to us apparently and uh, there is also in the tafsir a long discussion about is it talking in tongue or is it just understood in terms of sama? Okay, and I'm not going to go into that. But the idea is yukallimun nas. It'll talk to the mankind. So it won't be talking in one language. It'll be talking either in many languages. But everyone's going to understand what it is saying regardless of language. And is nas here a specific people or everyone? Also that discussion is there which I'm not going to go into right now. But when you add everything together, the magical enchantment, you know, in in al bayani sihr, the Prophet, indeed, in some of the communicate bayans, there's magic, right? And so the, this is something that will have a magical effect. It will wound you in terms spiritually, emotionally, physically, with, you know, this jim, one jim, two jim, you know, jim, right? The... The jim, you know what I mean by jim, right? The uh, jim panch and that we're in, or the jim, uh, you know, the f i v e, okay, that we're in. This is something that is going to be talking to us. It's going to be hurting us. It's going to have a magical effect. It's going to do magical things to us. It's going to uh, be the peak of, uh, or one of the peaks of this idea of jasasa surveillance, right? Knowing where you are, what you're doing figuring you out, right? It will be the peak of that. And uh, so now there's a lot more discussion to be had. But when you look at it from just the word, uh, not the word dabba, but what it does, okay? And then we'll talk about why the word dabba is used uh, instead of something else, uh, maybe at another time. But when you add up all these things, it'll be a time where they're not, in, everything in the media is promoting wrong things. Okay, everything in the media is promoting wrong things. We know the people that control the media today. 98% of it is controlled by Ya'juj and Ma'juj. It is having an enchanting effect upon people. It, your behavior towards it will increase your Iman, will make your Iman clear, or your behavior towards it will put you in darkness. This can have many meanings. Uh, but I'm not going to go into it. If you listen to it for good reasons, good things could happen. If you listen to it for bad things, bad things will happen. But majority of the people will be caught into the darkness of it. Okay? So, I think it's clear what I'm saying, what this is all referring to. It is something that is, this frequencies, this radiation is hurting us. And the more you're using it, the more it's hurting you. And this is why I want to end in the narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet said in bayna yaday is sa'a indeed before the hour fitanan there will be fitnas qat'a al-layl al-mudlima like the dark pieces of the night yusbihu rajulu fiha mu'minan wa yumsi kafir the same idea of 
becoming mu'min and kafir. Over there, it just talks about the effect. You'll either become enlightened or you become dark. But over here, it's saying you'll either become mu'min or kafir. Okay? What is the thing that overnight you'll become kafir? Okay? Uh, it is like dark pieces of the night. It's dark pieces of the night. So there's some light, but dark pieces of the night. There may, you may get iman through this. Many people become Muslim through the, uh, this process of the internet and all of this, right? Through the telephone and the TV. Many people become Muslim. But majority of what's happening is nothing. It's like salt in, 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 it's salt compared to, uh, it's very little. Okay. The one who's sitting is less affected by it than the one who's standing. Because when you're sitting and you're on your phone, okay, but when you're walking, then you have more wearables, more Bluetooth, more things going on. Now you have your car and the satellite is also affecting you. وَيُمْسِي يُمْشِي الْمَاشِي فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ السَّعِي And the one who's running, okay? And where will this be? At a time where the Prophet says, when there's violence, because it will all end in violence. Because one of the aspects of this whole, you know, frequency and internet and everything is teaching people violence. And so the Prophet says, look, because, and, and after this, you know, Circus 19 thing that came out, the whole world went on the internet. The whole, there's a book on this, actually. How the whole world, and the book is about how the whole world went on the internet, and we succeeded on putting on everyone the internet. And it, is, it was praising how everyone went on the internet. Everyone went into Jassasa. Everyone has more time for this frequency, and more frequency, and more frequency. Now we have in our lives, because we have nothing else to do. And so the Prophet said, this now, all of this is going to lead to uh, probably uh, an economic downfall because you can't be in lockdown forever, okay? And then when the downfall happens, okay, and the lockdown, uh, when when things start to break down, people are going to come into your houses, and especially in the Muslim countries, then the Prophet is saying, Salam at that time, don't kill your brother. Let him kill you. Be the better of the two sons of Ibn Adam, okay? So here is a picture of how Perhaps, and Allah knows best, but how Dabbatul Ard is affecting us. It's talking to us, and we're listening to it one direction. It's teaching us one direction for the most part. Most of it's negative, okay? And uh, it's magical, it's enticing. And uh, it's talking to us and wounding us through radi radiation at the same time. And so, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is just this phenomenon that we're living in seems to best fit the parable or the metaphor of the Asa of Musa and the ring of Suleiman and the marking of people because when you're on the internet you're listening to people and they're marking you because you begin to dress like those who you like that you're watching you start talking like them you start dressing like them you start buying their books wearing their clothes you know Michael Jordan and all of that Right? And then you become marked. And what does the Quran say about what shaitan does? Shaitan marks his people. Okay? So this is all, uh, this phenomenon of Dabbatul Ard, uh, very precisely understood by Shaykh Imran Hussain. But I'm adding it so, in a way, so people can see that he is not talking out of the blue. This is part of our tradition. And if you put it all together, it becomes more meaningful today than ever before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all increase us in our iman. Because what should this do? This should increase you in your iman. This should increase you in wanting to be closer to Islam and sticking to Islam and understanding that we're going through trials and no, no one is perfect and all of us are going to fail. And just keep trying though. Never give up. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.